say so? Well, good evening, church family. Come on, let's bless the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together. Let's pray for
of you know that God is worthy to be praised. Clap your hands, lift your hands, whatever you need to do. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we've come to rejoice and be glad in it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The upper shall hit the up and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt God's name together. Come on, it's revival tonight. We've come to be revived. We've come to be renewed. We've come to be restored. And if you believe that God is worthy, to be praised open up your mouth and give God glory magnify his name God is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same our God your God my God is worthy to be praised hallelujah You came to lift the name high. Oh, just wave your hand if you got a reason to praise him on tonight. Come on, just with the fruits of your lips, say hallelujah. If you got a reason to bless him on tonight, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but I got plenty of reasons to bless him on tonight. Hallelujah. This is an old favorite song that we know, let the praise begin. So we want you to sing with us on tonight. We want you to blow the roof off of this house until the Lord can feel your presence and touch with his. Come on and put those hands together all over the cathedral.
Raise up, send the praise up. Say raise up, send the praise. Yeah. That the Lord might be pleased with our worship on tonight. Hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. How many know it's in your praise tonight? Whatever you need from God is in your praise tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your praise and it's in that name. How many grateful for the name? Hallelujah. How many love that name tonight? Wonderful Jesus! Glory to God! Yes, God, the name that's above every name. We bless His name tonight. Glory to God! Come on, let's go back together. The name of Jesus lifted high, lifted high, lifted high.
What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord this evening. It is now time for our scripture, and it's coming from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, not sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. Amen. Amen. God's word for God's people. Amen. You may take it in your chosen prayer posture. Let us go before our God, the one who sees and hears, but likewise answers. Eternal God, our Father, we come before you right now, thanking you, O oh God, for this day that you have made. We've come to rejoice and be glad in it. God, we come for this time of refreshment and renewal and revival, oh God. Thank you, Lord, that there is a spirit of revival already in this place. God, you have come and shown yourself mighty and strong in the lives of your people, oh God. And there are people that still await responses or answers. God, we know that you've already answered. We just haven't seen it manifest all the time. But God, we thank you that you're a faithful God and we can trust you in all things, knowing that you see and you hear all. God, I pray a blessing upon this time. I pray that our hearts would be pointed towards you, oh God, that we would not see each other, oh God, but rather we would just look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. God, we thank you that you hold this entire world in your hands and it looks crazy, it feels crazy, it sounds crazy, it smells crazy, people act crazy, but God, we thank you that you're in full control. You're seated on your throne, oh God. There is nothing out of your sight, O oh God. And so when we feel rocked, we thank you that we can stand upon the rock of our salvation. God, I thank you now for this service, O oh God. I pray a blessing upon everybody under the sound of my voice, O oh God, whether in this place or our wheel or wherever watchers, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, that you're everywhere. We know that you're omnipresent. So there's no one out of your sight, O oh God. So we come before you right now with humble hearts, our minds focused on you, O oh God, that we would come and be transformed by the word that would go forth tonight. Pray a blessing upon our preacher this evening, O oh God. Give him preaching power. Have him preach with authority, O oh God, knowing that if he stands on your word, O oh God, nothing is impossible. So God, I ask that our lives would be transformed and our minds would be renewed, O oh God, as we leave this place, O oh God. I pray now a blessing upon the musicians and the soloists and our praise team, the choir, oh God. I thank you for everyone's presence in this place, our courtesy corps, those in the parking lot. I pray a blessing upon every person that's operating in production, oh God. You've just been a faithful God, and so we trust, we lean, and depend upon you. And God, we're called right now as a church to be excited evangelists, oh God. So help us to go out and speak a word as a result of what we hear and see this evening. Oh God, let us never give up, let us never let up, and let us never shut up talking about your goodness, that you would ultimately get all glory and praise for the great God that you are, the great things that you've done, and we look forward to the great things that you will do in Jesus' name, amen.
and celebrate a God who makes it all right. Come on and celebrate a God who makes everything all right. If you believe that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose, celebrate a God who makes everything all right. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, it will. All right, we got to talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. Look towards somebody and say, oh, yes, it will. You just got to make somebody smile a little brighter. Look at them and say, oh, yes, it will. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Oh, yes, it will. <laughs> Those who sow in tears will reap in joy. Oh, yes, it will. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. Oh, yes, it will. My God. My God, my God. Well, come on and just put a brain right. glad to be in the Lord's church this evening. Come on and celebrate God. Thank God for this moment in time. If you choose to be seated, you can. If you choose to remain standing, that's fine. We're just excited that God has given us one more chance to gather together in this sacred space to honor the Lord for his goodness and his grace and to fellowship one with another be reminded that's what these songs are all about these prayers to be reminded that God makes everything all right it's amazing how he does it as you look back over the shoulder of your life you can testify things that you never thought you'd make it through God some kind of way worked that for your good and you're better and stronger and wiser 
because you had to endure what you had to endure. And tonight you're a living, breathing testimony of the miraculous wonder and work of our God. And I thank him for it tonight, don't you? Help me celebrate God one more good time. Praise the Lord. We're here for night number three of Wednesdays in the Word. It's been a phenomenal month. God has breathed on our time together. God has blessed us. And I'm excited uh, that we are here for night number three of these four nights of Wednesdays in the Word, Fall Edition. I thank God for each of you who has been here every one of these three nights. If you've been here so far, all three of these Wednesdays, just raise your hand. God bless you. Praise God for you. For those who are just here for this first Wednesday, welcome. We're so glad that you made it this evening. We praise God for your presence in the Lord's church. Those who've been here two weeks, God bless you. Praise God for your ability to be with us. And we celebrate your presence in worship tonight. How many were with me in prayer early this morning? Six o'clock, you in prayer? Praise the Lord for a praying church. I thank God for a praying church. Thank you for being with us early this morning. How many were in the six o'clock prayer time this evening? The prayer ministry was amazing. Dr. Atu Quafio felt like talking to the Lord today. Thank you so much for your leadership, Doc. We appreciate you and we thank God for you. Help me celebrate our music ministry. They're absolutely amazing and we thank God for them. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Leander. Bless you. Minister of Music, we see you over there. We're still praying for you. Take your time, young man. Mama used to say, God bless you, man. We're praying for your continued recovery, and we thank God for your presence in the Lord's church. Amen. We're delighted to have visitors with us. If you're not a member of Wheeler Avenue, just wave at me, please. You're not a member. You're visiting from another church. Wave at me. God bless you. So good to see you tonight. Thank you so much for choosing to spend this Wednesday evening at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I'm delighted to have at least two of my brother pastor friends in the room this evening. And I praise God for Pastor William Jordan. If you don't mind, Pastor, just stand up so we can see where you are, so we can celebrate your presence among us tonight. Thank you, sir, for slipping in and being with us tonight. Pastor John Foster, won't you please stand? We're just excited to see you, and we thank God for you. Praise the Lord for your presence. Two of the cleanest preachers on God's green earth. They just stay clean. They mow the lawn in those kinds of outfits. They just, they don't know how not to be clean. And we praise God for them. Any other pastors in the room tonight? I don't want to obfuscate any other's presence, anyone else's presence. Thank you, pastors, for being with us tonight. And may the Lord bless you. How many ready for the picnic Sunday? Yep. I'm excited about the picnic. It's coming up this coming Sunday afternoon, beginning at 3.19 p.m. And I hope that you will join us at Discovery Green as we uh, go and share the blessings on blessings that each of us enjoys. Tillmans are here. Anything I need to say other than what I just said? Picnic distribution for tickets after service. If you've not picked up your packet, your tickets, please do that immediately following this service. As you leave, uh, the Tillmans and their team will be available to make sure that you can pick up packets immediately after this service. And the next time will be Saturday from 10 to 12. From 10 to 12 Saturday here at the church from 10 to 12. And then the final time will be Sunday before and after the first service, not the second. Before and after the first service, after the second service, they'll be going downtown to get ready for our picnic. So you got to pick up everything before and after the first service, and it's going to be a phenomenal time. We are expecting all of those who have registered to join us there, and let's just have a grand time sharing the blessings that we all enjoy as a church family. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Anything else I need to talk about? Pastor Stroman's here. Where's Pastor Stroman? I asked for man. Good to see you, man. All the way from down the street. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for making that long journey down the street to come and be with us. God bless you, Pastor Stroman. We appreciate you, man. Please stand up so everybody can see you. I don't know if you know our brother, our, our neighbor from all the way down the street. Pastor Stroman is here. Thank you, sir, for your presence with us. It's offering time in the Lord's church, and we're excited about giving. We're excited about giving. You do know only 80% of your road just clapped. I don't know what they were doing when, uh, when we mentioned that uh, because you do know that God loves a cheerful giver. So let's try it one more time. It's offering time in the Lord's church. That's the church I love. That's the church I love. 
Praise God for you. Let's begin to give as is our custom, either digitally or through the envelopes that are being passed around now through our Courtesy Corps members as they move through the aisles. If you have a paper gift that you'd like to give to the Lord's Church, we invite you to do that. Uh, as these ushers are moving about us now and immediately following the benediction as you're headed toward the Tillman's tables, you can go and push your, put your paper gifts into uh, the offering receptacles that are lining the walls of the cathedral. If you're using digital platforms, you'll see them scrolling on the screen even now and we invite you to utilize uh, whichever means of giving is most comfortable for you, whichever you prefer. And as we give this evening, we are grateful uh, that as we give, according to the word of God, it shall be given back unto us in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall people give into your laps? Listen to what the Bible says. With the same measure you give, it shall be given unto you. I need some Bible-believing people in here to celebrate the fact that you can't beat God giving no matter how you try. Well, let's bow down in a moment of consecration of these gifts and then prepare for the ministry of music and the ministry of the word. Let us pray. Gracious God, how we give you thanks for this day that you have made and for the opportunity that we have to gather together in this sacred space to worship you in the beauty of your holiness and now to offer unto you that which you first gave unto us. We thank you that you have prospered us in the ways that you have. And now we pray that you will bless each gift and each giver. Bless the homes that we represent and may no one lack as a consequence of what we give tonight. Return to us as you see fit so we will always have the testimony of our elders that we really can't be God giving no matter how we try. We do thank you tonight for victory in our finances and we'll say it until we see it in Jesus name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give unto our God. As we give, we thank God for all those who are watching us all around the world. God bless you, my sisters and brothers, and may you be revived even in the space that you occupy now for the glory of God. I'm excited that my beloved brother is back in this place. Pastor Clinton McFarland has returned to share with us tonight all the way from the great state of Georgia. Georgia on my mind, and I thank God for him and for his witness in the world. He is a master preacher, and I'm so grateful that out of all the places that he could have chosen to be on this night, he chose to be with us at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. We are going to be the better because he has made his way this way. So immediately following the music ministry of the Wheeler Avenue Mass Choir, I want you to receive my beloved brother and friend, the Reverend Pastor Clinton McFarland. Will you welcome him even now as he prepares to preach the word to us? Keep 
Withdraw 
Thank you, Jesus. For I Y'all didn't know that. I need. Do you know that one? The old. I need thee. to do oh bless me now my savior savior I come that's all you're gonna do to to the you didn't know the words to that. Let's see if you know the words to this. Yes. Yes. Anybody got a yes in your spirit tonight? Yes. Yes. Glory, glory, glory. Yes. tonight bless you tonight and thank God for all of you sit down if you can if you can I greet all of you my brothers and sisters glory to God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I bear witness that there is no other name given among men whereby men can be saved other than the name Jesus. How many believe that tonight? It is at that name that every knee should bow, every tongue should confess. We bless the Lord. We thank God for the goodness he has afforded us. Truly, God is good all the time. How many believe that tonight? What a mighty God we serve. I'm excited. I am elated. I am ecstatic. I am enthused about this priceless and precious privilege to be in the Lord's house. I am clearly conscious and cognizant of the fact that I could have been dead sleeping in my grave, but the Lord touched my body right early this morning. Let me see a brand new day. Come on, if you're glad to be alive, put a praise on it, put a praise on it. Let me honor the eminent, the illustrious, the marvelous, magnanimous, splendiferous, pastor of this great church. He is my friend and brother, the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby. Come on, will you, will you? That's my friend. One of the preachingest preachers to ever preach a preach. If you understood that, that's what I mean. He was just with us in Atlanta at the Grace Church, and we're still repairing. We're still repairing places that have caved in. He preached the roof off of the house. Well, y'all know it. You get it every Sunday, don't you? I mean, you know what I'm talking about. 
To all of the pastors and preachers, Foster, Jordan, good to see you brothers, all of these pastors and preachers, all of you, my father. How about this awesome musical aggregation? Wow. My God. So delighted to be here. So delighted to be here. I'm so glad to have my wife traveling with me tonight. Stand up so they'll see where you are. So if they got anything negative to say about me, just try not to do it in that area right there. If I ain't preaching good, if you don't like what I said, just be kind. Every, rest of y'all, y'all cool, I can't hear you. But she's with me, she's a native of Texas, Austin, Texas. And, uh, but there are certain places that she loves to travel with me. And uh, there are certain places, I mean, I have no problem. Houston is one, Vegas is another one. <laughs> New York. I said, baby, I'm gonna be in Tulalula, Alabama. You going? No. <laughs> But when I say Houston, Texas, she's with me. Thank you so much. There are some people from Mississippi in the building tonight. All of my, all my Mississippi folk. All right, all right, I see you. And there are others who told me they would be here. All right, I have, uh, and I need your prayers. Chris, my organist, flew here to be with me today too. Thank you, Chris. All right, I, I need your prayers. I am not making excuses, but I am because I'm struggling with a bad cold. In fact, it's bronchitis. And uh, so I'm gonna be preaching and pumping, preaching and after I finish preaching, pumping, trying to get this. I will uh, put a mask on if you hug me. It ain't COVID now, y'all done got quiet on me. On ring, he done got that virus. Bringing that virus up in his church. No, it ain't COVID. I did take a test. One brother looking at me like, now you sure? Yeah, because I don't want that. So I do ask for your prayers, but I'm going to do the best I can. I felt a little better when I talked with the pastor. He said, man, I got the same thing. I said, is it COVID? And let me know, brother. You my brother, but... 1 Samuel chapter 17, 1 Samuel chapter 17, it's a very familiar text. In fact, it is so familiar that I'm begging you not to tune me out. Amen. While you're turning, I, lest I forget, I believe beside every good man, that's a better woman. I didn't recognize the first lady. Will you put your hands together? Amen. I don't want to do that. Yes, she stands beside her husband. And I thank God. Thank God. Amen. All right, let me try to do this. Verse 32. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and 
and out of the paw of the bear he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. I want to talk tonight about giant fighting faith. Giant fighting faith. The word faith is found in the Old Testament only two times. But though it is there only twice, we see examples of faith throughout the Old Testament. We see an example of faith in Daniel chapter number 3. For it is here where the Hebrew boys are faced with the possibility of incineration by way of a fiery furnace. But it was their faith in God that gave them the courage to stand and declare, throw us in the fire. But we have a God who is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. That's one example of faith. We're going to see another example of faith in the Old Testament in Exodus chapter number 14. It is here where Moses is leading the children of Israel. And they now seem to have been trapped at the Red Sea. The sea is in front of them. Mountains on both sides of them and Pharaoh and his army are behind them. But it was Moses' faith in God that pushed him to obey the word of God. When God told him to stretch out a stick, he stretched out that stick and God parted the Red Sea and his children marched across on dry land. But notice I said uh, concerning the children of Israel that they seem to have been trapped at the Red Sea. Let me paint the picture. Sea is in front of them. Mountains on both sides of them. And Pharaoh and his army are behind them. They seemed to have been trapped at the Red Sea. You missed it. Let me try it again. Sea is in front of them. Mountains on both sides of them. And Pharaoh and his army are behind them. They seemed to have been trapped at the Red Sea. But what I've come to discover about our God is that when your enemy thinks that they have you trapped, it was God who put you there for bait. He baited Pharaoh into pursuing the children of Israel through the Red Sea. And you Bible readers, you theologians already know the end of the story that when Pharaoh pursued them through the sea, Pharaoh and his army were drowned in the Red Sea. Ladies and gentlemen, that's another example of faith in action in the Old Testament. Let me give you one more. It's Daniel chapter number six. It is here where Daniel would not stop praying although prayer had been outlawed and the penalty was fatal. But it was Daniel's faith in God after going into the den of hungry lions, it caused God to change the dietary nature of lions. Animals who were once carnivores became herbivores. They had no diet, no taste for meat on that night and Daniel is in this den of hungry lions and one writer records that Daniel got so comfortable until he laid his feet on one lion and his head on another lion and the lions are still roaring while rocking Daniel to sleep and Daniel is singing all day, all night angels keep watching over me my lord ladies and gentlemen these are examples of faith 
in action in the Old Testament. And we're going to see another example of faith in action in our text on tonight. But before we dive into the text, I want to raise the question, what is faith? Faith, ladies and gentlemen, is when you can see it before you get it. Some of y'all missed that one. Let me try this one. Faith is when you can believe it, although you don't see it. Fifteen of y'all didn't catch that one. Let me try this one. Faith is when you can step out on nothing and believe that something is there. And I want to tell you tonight that faith is not only that, it is when you can stand on your own convictions in the midst of doom, disaster, and destruction and believe that we have a God who some way, somehow, he will make a way. And somebody ought to have that kind of faith in this place tonight that know that God will make a way. And if you don't have it, you better get it tonight because one day you're going to be faced with a seemingly impossible, invincible, insurmountable situation. And it is then that you're going to have to use your faith in God but I ought to have a witness that know tonight that with faith in God, you can take what you do in the natural and God will turn around and put his super on your natural and have you doing the supernatural. I'm talking about with faith in God. Because what are you facing right now? I'm watching some of you and you're mighty cool about this, but I know that behind that fake facade and that camouflage countenance, you have some issues that are plaguing you right now. You've been shouting and dancing, and that's a good thing. You've been skipping and praising, and that's a good thing, but you've got some giant situations in your life right now and I want to tell you how to handle them because you can either fear it or face it. If you fear it, it ain't going nowhere. But if you face it with faith, I ought to have about 60 witnesses that know that God is able to make a way somehow. And we're going to see that in the text on tonight. Y'all got time for me to tell you about it? It is in this text where Israel is at war with the Philistines. Israel is positioned on the top of a mountain while the Philistines are positioned on the top of an opposing mountain and the valley of Elah is in between them. The Philistines have a giant whose name is Goliath. He is their champion. And Goliath would come from the top of the mountain to the valley every morning, every evening, and he would shout at the people of God. He would say to them, we ain't all got to fight in this battle. Just send one man to fight against me, and if he defeats me, then we'll be your slaves. But if I defeat him, then you must be our slaves. Y'all mighty cool about that. Maybe you're cool because you don't know that Goliath is a giant of a man. Come close, let's talk about it. He stood nine feet, nine inches tall. He has a helmet of brass on his head. He has a coat of mailed brass weighing 125 pounds. He has brass and bronze leggings covering his legs. He has a sword and a spear and a shield. He's a giant of a man and he makes this challenge to Israel. 
all of us ain't got to fight. Just send me one guy who's not afraid, who's not scared to fight against me. And if he defeats me, we'll be your slaves. But if I defeat him, you must be our slaves. Everybody in the army of Israel were afraid of this giant. Everybody is afraid now of the giant. And oh, one day, little David came to the battlefield to check on his brothers. He inquired about this seemingly invincible, impossible, and insurmountable giant. And after inquiring about him, he then goes to King Saul and says to the king, he says, don't worry about a thing. I got him, I'll beat this giant. Saul looks at him and says, don't be ridiculous. You're just a lad of a boy. And this guy been fighting since he was a little boy. But David obviously had a real good argument because Saul consented to let him go and fight the giant. Here's the end of the story. He goes to fight the giant, uh, and the end of the story is that the giant came tumbling down. That's the whole story right there. He got the victory over this giant. This giant came tumbling down. Now, I wanted to give you the end of the story because I know the nature of some black Baptist in that if the preacher goes over 15 minutes, you have the tendency to go to sleep. I saw two or three of you already sleepy because I've been up about 10 already. So I didn't want you to go to sleep not knowing that David got the victory. So since I already gave you the end of the story, he got the victory. If you're going to go to sleep, go on now, sleep well. But if I could get about 270 of you that will stay awake for a little while, let's back this thing up and see how it is. He got the victory. Is there anybody want to know? First of all, Goliath, when he came from the mountain to mock the people of God, the people heard Goliath mocking them. David, when he came, he heard him mocking God. Y'all missed that. David said, wait a minute. We are children of the most high God. And when our enemy challenges us, it ain't no challenge to us. It's a challenge to our God. I wish some folk in Houston would learn that tonight, that when your enemy challenges you, it's not a challenge to you, it's a challenge to your God. And we've got a God who will fight our battle. I'm tired of folk who talk about a God who can make a way somehow, who sing about a God who can open doors that's been closed in your face, who preach about a God who can do anything but fail. But time you face a giant, you act like you don't know what you're going to do. I need about 77 people who will lift your sanctified hand and say, I'm going to trust in God. This ain't about me. It's about my God and my God will. You ought to just elbow somebody and tell them he will fight your battle. Come on, elbow the next one and tell them he will fight your battle. David said, no, I'm starting to feel like preaching here tonight. 
He said this is no challenge. To us, it's a challenge to our God. Everybody was afraid of this giant. Verse 11 of this chapter tells us that even Saul, who was the king, is afraid. Now that's sad right there because he's the leader. And it's sad when the leader is afraid. It's sad when you got a chicken leader, a jello courage leader, a spaghetti backbone leader. That's why Wheeler ought to be shouting and giving God praise because you got a man who will stand in the midst of whatever is confronting God's people. Somebody ought to give God praise to have a strong. Saul is afraid. Everybody is afraid of the giant. But oh, here comes little David. Oh, make me feel like it tonight. David comes and he inquires about the giant. That's around verse 22 of the text. He inquires about this giant. He raises a question. What will the guy get if he defeats the giant? Well, they said, first of all, you're going to be a rich man. Secondly, you will pay no more taxes in Israel. Thirdly, you're going to marry the king's daughter. Now, my imagination is working with me now. If I had been there, I'd have said, she ha he has two daughters. One don't look so good. Which one? And they said, it's that fine one named Micah. David said, I'll fight the giant. Brothers, it's amazing what a woman will have you doing. He said, I'll fight the giant. But I want you to watch something tonight. While David is there inquiring about the giant, y'all got time for me to tell you about it? His big brother in verse 28 pulls up and starts scorning his little brother. He says, David, what are you doing down here? I know you, young man. I know the naughtiness of your heart. Why are you down here in business that you have no business being in? You got to understand that David had three brothers who had already enlisted in the Israelite army, Eliab, Abinadab, and Shammoth. And the big brother is scorning little brother. What are you doing here? Why are you here? I know the naughtiness of your heart. Where did you leave those few little sheep that daddy told you to take care of? Now, whenever I read the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, I read it and ask questions at the same time. My question is why is big bruh so angry with little brother? I read all of chapter 17. I found nothing in chapter 17 that would show me why big brother or why big brother is angry with little brother. But I wanted to know. The text says that he's angry with little David. The Spirit of God told me the answer to your question is not in chapter 17. Back up. To chapter 16 it is in chapter 16 where the prophet Samuel is sent to the house of Jesse to anoint the next king of Israel the first one they brought out was big brother but when he stood before the priest and the prophet the oil wouldn't run they brought out boy number two, a bin of dab, but the oil wouldn't run. They brought out boy number three, shum up, but the oil wouldn't run. 
They brought out boy number four, number five, no oil. Number six, number seven, no oil. But the prophet said, wait a minute. I know the Lord told me to come to your house and anoint the next king. Are you sure these are all the sons you have? Jesse scratched his head, said, wait a minute. I got one I forgot about. He's out there with the sheep. Surely he ain't the one. But the prophet said, go get him. Bring him to me. They brought in little David. He stood before the prophet. And y'all know what happened? The oil started to run. Ah, that's about to shout me. If I have to shout by myself, cause you know what that tells me? When you look over me, God looks at me. You may not think I'm much, but I'm somebody in the eyesight of God. Shake somebody's hand like you're gonna shake it off and tell them, neighbor, don't look over me. I am anointed. Man looks at the outer appearance. But God looks at the heart. I'm somebody, tell somebody I've been anointed. Saul had the appointment, but David had the anointment. I know anointment ain't a word, but I said it anyhow. Shake somebody's hand and tell them I'm anointed. Tell somebody, don't look over me. I may not look like much now, but please be patient with me. God is not through, but when he gets through with me, And in chapter 17, big brother is still angry about what happened in chapter 16. One of y'all need to find big brother and tell him, get over it. Do y'all have some big brothers like that in your life? You done moved from your chapter 16, you in chapter 17, and they are still mad. about what happened in chapter number 16. David is now anointed. He does not have the appointment yet because there was a fella still in the appointment, but he was fired and didn't know it. God will let you stay in the job, work the job, and you fired at the same time. David is anointed. I'm almost done. Ah, I feel like lifting him up though. He's anointed, ladies and gentlemen, but he's not yet exposed. Let me try this side. He's anointed, Pastor Jordan, but not exposed. Nobody knew he was anointed. So God had to let David face a giant. Hold up. This ain't even David's giant. This is Saul's giant. But God had to let David face an impossible situation to expose 
God help me. The anointing that was on his life. He was anointed but not exposed. But after he fought the giant and the giant came tumbling down, songs were being written by, about David. Everybody was talking about David. There's somebody in this room. You are anointed, you just hadn't been exposed. And you're facing a giant right now. And you're about to lose your mind not realizing that God put the giant there so he can expose what's on the inside of you. Dr. Cosby, your church know you are anointed because look at the giants that you've had to face. And when God worked it out, when others said it was impossible, but it happened anyway, then even the devil in hell knows that you are anointed. Lift your hand and tell him, thank you for the giant. I need to be exposed. Come on, lift both hands and say, thank you for the giant. I'm not going to run from my giant. I'm not going to cry about my giant. I won't be afraid of that demon that's on my job. I won't be afraid with that devil that's in my home. I've been anointed and my giants must come down. Put them down. I'm done. David in verse 32, now he gets to Saul. I promise when I tell you this, I'm done. Cause I ain't got much left. He gets to Saul in verse 32. He says to Saul, Pastor Foster, he says, don't worry about a thing. I'll fight the giant. Saul looked at him in verse 33 and said, don't be ridiculous. Now watch this church, verse 32, David engages faith talk. See, faith talk is when you talk, talk that's bigger than you. Faith talk is when nobody thinks you can do it because it's never been done before. But you stand up and say, I got this. Verse 32, he embraces faith talk. Verse 33, Saul comes back with fear talk. I think I'll tell you, don't talk to everybody. You all excited about what God's getting ready to do. And you mess around and tell the wrong Negro. And they want to tell you everybody who tried it. But how do you counter fear talk? 32, faith talk. 33, fear talk. He came right back in verse 34 and said, you don't think I can do it? You better ask a lion. You better ask a bear if you can find them. They tried to devour my daddy's sheep. And I killed that lion and I killed that bear and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Watch the text. Seeing he hath defied the army of the living God. That's faith talk, brothers and sisters. But I'm going to leave you when I raise the question, how did David get that kind of faith? Just a lad of a boy. Whole army is afraid. Saul is afraid. How did he get this kind of faith? I would contend that he got this kind of faith while he was giving attention to his father's sheep. Come close. He's out there in a 
desolate place a deserted place nobody but David and God can I help you Wheeler faith is like film it's developed in dark places They, some of them missed that, Dr. Cosby. Can I tell you what? Let me try it one more time. I said, faith is like film. It's developed in dark places. Now, let me tell you why some of y'all missed it, and I'm going to try to hit the runway as best I can. The reason you missed it, because we don't take pictures the old school way. I'm from Shibuta, Mississippi. I know what I'm talking about. We take it with a digital camera or a cell phone and you're there fixing your hair while you're looking at yourself. That ain't the way we used to do it. Where I'm from and where some of you are from, if you admit it, we had two kinds of cameras. The first one is the Polaroid camera. Where are my Polaroid saints? That Polaroid camera, you take the picture, you didn't even know if matter was in your eye. <laughs> Stuff round your mouth. How messed up. You take it, it slide out. And you pull it out in your head. To... Uh-oh, I got some Polaroid. But then there was that Kodak camera. Uh-oh. You had to take the whole roll. Don't know if your eyes were closed. Don't know if something was on your clothes or you were, your clothes were wrinkled. But you took the whole roll. Then you take it out and you take it to what we used to call in Mississippi, Gerald, a drugstore. Now I know y'all sophisticated. It's a pharmacy now, I know. But when I was a boy, it was a drugstore. And in that drugstore, they had what is called a dark room. Now, you took the film out the camera to the drugstore. They would take it through a dark place. And whatever was on the film in the camera was then manifested, but it was not manifested until it had to go through a dark place. Come on, fist bump somebody and tell them, you don't know what's in you. Come on, tell them you don't know what's in you till you have to go through a dark place. Somebody in this room tonight, you're in a dark place right now. But I want to tell you that whatever is on the inside of you, if you got doubt in you, it's coming out. If you got faith in you, it's coming out. Is there anybody here that's got faith in God? I want to tell you this is not the time to throw in the towel. This is not the time to quit on God when you're dealing with a giant. David had faith in God and when he went through a dark place, he was able to stand up against his giant. And you know what Saul told him? He said, son, go on and fight that giant. But if you're going to fight him, here is my armor. And you know what David did? He tried on that armor. But I've got some Bible readers know that the armor did not fit. And I believe 
that the Lord didn't let it fit because what God was saying I'm gonna give you the victory but it ain't gonna happen the way you think it's gonna happen it won't be by might nor by power but by my spirit said the Lord is there anybody here that know that God is able to give you the victory lift your sanctified hand and said victory it is mine I'ma defeat my giant I'ma bring down this situation how am I gonna do it first John 4 and 4 greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world I'ma bring this giant down Isaiah 57 17 no weapon formed against me y'all help me preach this shall prosper look at little David he went on down there to that giant standing there like a child of God the giant looked at David and started mocking him but I like little David you know what he said he said you come to me with a sword and spear but I come to you in the name of the Lord is there anybody here that know that there's power in the name of the Lord shake somebody's hand and tell them neighbor there is power in the name of the Lord ain't God alright David got before the giant he picked up five smooth stones he took one out and put him in his shepherd's bag and can I use uh, my spiritual imagination when he put it in his slingshot he wound it up uh, three times uh, one for the father one for the son y'all know what I'm gonna say and one for the Holy Ghost uh, and when he let that rock go, an angel got behind the rock and guided that rock to the only vulnerable spot that was on Goliath's body. Hit him in the forehead. And you know what happened. That giant came tumbling down. Ain't God all right? Is there anybody? in this room tonight uh, that's got a giant uh, I want to tell you uh, it's coming down uh, come on declare it uh, my giant uh, is coming down uh, because the Lord will help me bring it down uh, is there anybody here who know he will uh, Bring it down, find you one good neighbor, shake that neighbor's hand, and tell him, neighbor, the God I serve, he's able, come on, tell him like you mean it, he's able, he's able, he's able to bring it down, it is no secret, what God can do, what he's done for us, the Lord, the Lord. Ah. He'll bring it down. Is there anybody here? 
situation. Did he do it? Did he do it? Anybody over here? No, he did it. Anybody over here? No, he did it. Won't he make a way? Won't he open doors? I got one question. I've got to ask you, y'all don't mind, can I ask you my question, won't he do it, won't he do it, won't he do it, if you know he will, throw your head back, stick your chest out, and shout yeah, shout yeah. Somebody is coming down. Come on, touch one person, tell him it's coming down. Find a second neighbor and tell him it's coming down. I dare you to find a third neighbor. You might have to come across the aisle, but tell him, neighbor, God will. He'll bring it down. Ah. I wish I could preach it like I feel it. Oh! Anybody in church who has giant fighting faith tonight? Anybody had your faith renewed tonight? You got giant fighting faith. We refuse to engage in fear talk. We're leaving here talking with faith talk. Every one of us will face some giant at points along our life's journey. The reason we come to revival is so that we can be renewed in our faith. Because last time I checked, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We've heard enough word tonight to give us a strong faith to fight the giants that arise in our lives. Thank you, Pastor McFarland, for encouraging us, for reminding us, for informing us that we who believe must have giant fighting faith. Oh, my. Thank God for the man of God and for the word of God. May the people of God be better because we've come this way tonight. Somebody tonight may need to use your faith. Step out to be saved tonight. The Bible says that we're saved by grace through faith. And those of us who would believe in the Lord simply need to take him at his word trust him try him and believe that he will save to the uttermost if you're here tonight you say pastor i've never accepted the lord jesus christ as my savior and i don't want to leave church tonight until i do if that's you my dear friend as our leaders stand with us tonight i want you to know that you don't have to leave here the same way you came you hear on this Wednesday night and you say, Pastor, I need to be saved. 
I want you to start walking toward me even right now. The Williams are standing with me with their arms extended, but their leaders all across the church with their arms extended saying, you are welcome here. Man, woman, or child, doesn't matter your age or stage of life, doesn't matter your ethnicity, doesn't matter your background, doesn't matter how many sins you've committed, you are welcome in this place to begin to develop your faith. Yeah, some of it's going to be developed in a dark space. But as you, as you develop your faith, you will see giants falling even in your lives. So if you're here on this Wednesday night, you say, Pastor, that's me. I need to put my trust in the living God to save me even tonight. I want you to walk toward me. Or secondarily, you say, Pastor, I'm saved. I know I'm saved. But I need a church home where I can grow and develop, where my faith can be increased as I hear the word of God proclaimed, as I share the fellowship of the saints. If that's you, my dear friend, I want you to start walking toward me even right now. You, my friend, can be a part of the family of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. We'd love to have you as our sisters, our brothers in the faith. They're coming even now, and I thank God for their response to the word of God. God bless you, my dears. As you make your way this way, maybe there are others who need to come down this way. As they walk past you, you need to be celebrating what God is doing in their lives as they begin this new journey of faith. Sister, brother, he comes up from the balcony. They're making their way all the way from the balcony. And I thank God that they have a faith. God bless you to believe God, to save, and to develop them into the people that God has called and created them to be. Sister, brother, who's next? Who else needs to come? Come on, come on, bring these boys this way, brother. Praise the Lord for you. Praise the Lord for you. Who else needs to come? Brother, sister, am I waiting on you? Are you the next person? In just a moment, we're going to sing all together. You hear the reverberation of this great song of the church. It speaks to us about the reality that none of us will be where we were, if, where we are, if it wasn't for the Lord on our side. And tonight, my sister, my brother, you can go farther along the journey with a greater faith in God. If you put your trust in him tonight, come be a part of his church, mark the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's sing together, if it had not been. Come on, lift your voices and sing. Yeah, for the Lord. Come on, sis. Come on, my brother. We're waiting on you. Where would I be? Where would I be? Can we sing it again? If it had not been. Yeah. For the Lord on my side. Oh, happy for you. Happy for you. Happy for you. Next phrase, he kept my enemies away. Sing. He, kept my enemies away. he let the sun shine through a cloudy day. He rocked me in the cradle of his arms. When he knew I'd been battered by the storm. Where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be? Come on, let's do it one last time. He kept my enemies away. Come on and think about it while you sing. Celebrate it while you sing. Let the sun shine. about you. I don't even want to know where I would be. 
Will you help me celebrate the fact that God has added to the church tonight? Come on and celebrate! What a joy. My dear sisters, my brothers, it is with the joy of the Lord that we, the family of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, welcome you to, a part, to be a part of our growing church family. I'm so excited that out of all the places where God could have sent you to either commence or continue your Christian journey, he sent you to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I'm excited to serve as your pastor. There are saints around you who are excited to be your newfound sisters and brothers. And we want you to know that we are looking forward to amazing things because you're now a part of the family of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Church family, I need you to show our new sisters and brothers just how excited we are. Come on and celebrate membership in the family. Listen, that's Deacon Keith Williams right there. He's going to tell you some information uh, along with the team about new membership at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Will you follow him? And she, uh, Deaconess Lisa Williams, is going to follow you as you all head now to new member orientation. God bless you. Praise God for you and for your decision tonight. Will you help me thank God for the man of God who preached the word of God, Pastor Clinton McFarland. Nice goodness now that's what you call preaching church preaching through it so that we might be better oh my if he had told us he was ill none of us would have known he was ill because God used you mightily to proclaim the word of God to us thank you sir we appreciate you Thank you so much, Lady McFarland, for accompanying that man of God to Houston, Texas today. We are so grateful that you came to be with us. And thank God for all of you who are visitors to our church who joined with us tonight to be a part of the experience of Wednesdays in the Word. This is an absolutely amazing season. Every single year when we come together for revival in the month of October, and of course in May as well. And I'm excited about the many things that God is doing here through these experiences of worship and revival. Got one more left, got one more left. The bishop himself is on the way. The Bishop Joseph Warren Walker III is going to be here next Wednesday, and we're looking forward to what God will do through him and what God will share with us as we conclude our time of revival. But this coming Sunday, Dr. Howard John Wesley is going to be here, and we're excited that the man of God will be here to preach to us. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a great rest of the month, great rest of the month. I hope that you will be a part of it. Be here as often as you can for all the experiences that we will share together. And until we get back together again, let's praise God from whom all blessings flow. McFarland has consented to shake hands and hug all those who are wanting to speak to him tonight. My word of my word of of um, exhortation to you is please make your comments as brief as you possibly can. There's just one of him and there are hundreds of us and we don't want to overburden the man of God who must get some rest and uh, recover from expending so much energy tonight. You have literally seven seconds to speak to the man of God seven seconds there's a big burly person who's going to be standing right next to him and that person will be counting and when you get to six and a half he's going to get a stone a smooth stone out of his shepherd's bag and the only place well no i'm just playing okay but i want you to make sure that you don't overburden the man of god let's make, make sure we tell him how much he blessed us and thank all the mississippi folk i know you're going to come down and share with your Mississippi native 
all those who may be from Georgia. He's a Stockbridge, Georgia pastor at the Grace Baptist Church. Whoever needs to come and share, we'll do that. We'll make your comments brief. I got to feed the man of God. Amen. Amen. All right. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. If you're going out and you're coming in, in your labor and in your leisure, in your joy, as well as in your sorrow, in your laughter and likewise in your tears, until that day when we meet the Lord face to face and cry holy, holy, holy to the Lord of hosts. Until that day, my brothers, my sisters, go in peace, go in love, go in joy. May the very God of peace, love, and joy go with you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, as we sing together with uplifted voices, let the church sing. Amen. Bless your church family. Have a great rest of this week. It's going to be a great rest of this month.